So I get several questions about my various roles, how I'm able to get those jobs, how I'm able to thrive in those jobs and, you know, accomplish so many things at these different jobs. So ever since I've been in my internship where I spent about six months to my role after that, my different roles after that, working in a SOC and also my last role, I did a dog. I've been able to get a lot of work done, especially within short periods of time and also achieve a lot of tangible things within these roles. And I've never really thought about those things, my like me working or like work ethic or getting things done or achieving things in terms of my jobs like as anything major just because i feel like i just i'm naturally wired to do that or i just naturally condition myself to do that because i you know i take my job my roles and my career very seriously but i was just recently thinking about it today and i, I realized that one of the biggest reasons why i'm able to just kind of really get into a role and just i'm able to like get a lot done within the time i'm at, at that role and actually like deliver in terms of the role is because i embody what that role is right so if you abstract yourself away from what your role is and think in a bigger picture perspective you're going to be able to abstract yourself away from the role and see yourself in the right light for what it takes to be successful in that role because ultimately the things we do in cybersecurity and in technology especially process wise operations wise even engineering wise are borrowed from different aspects of life and work that are a lot more matured and have been operating under different processes for a very long time so like devops for example a lot of devops principles are borrowed from you know how things are done in mature manufacturing plants or production plants right like you know even the term production comes from production plants right so like all of those things are borrowed from some previous industry right you know for example in cybersecurity, a lot of our terms are borrowed from the military right exfiltration for example like that's borrowed from the military right reconnaissance is borrowed from the military right so a lot of our cybersecurity operational work technological work engineering work is somewhat borrowed from some other industry and i think when you understand the core of that industry it helps you better understand what your job is now bringing that back into getting things done in my role or like building a career i think fundamentally i embody the abstract figure of whatever my role is so let's start from being a cybersecurity analyst i was a cybersecurity analyst for a little over a year almost two years and while i was doing that i thought of myself as an investigator right as an investigator you're looking for things you're trying to find things you're trying to find details that you know will help whoever maybe the, the detective or whoever that's going to be analyzing that information to make inferences and eventually come down to a decision about what exactly is happening right i'm triaging right i'm gathering details about something right that at a fundamental level was what i was doing as a cybersecurity analyst right your tier one stuff like just using queries to to investigate data right like you're an investigator at the core of what you're doing as a cybersecurity analyst and embodying that persona as a cybersecurity analyst helps you think of things in that way because as an investigator you're looking for all the evidence you're looking for all the different pieces of things that um, are required to come to a conclusion about that alert that you got that signal that you got right you got that bad signal you got that alarm that's letting you know oh there's something going on like you're you're the dispatcher right at the fire station or at the police station or at when now when you call 911 you're the dispatcher you're essentially gathering information about what is going on and all of that information is going to be important when you're escalating to the fireman the fire officer the the, the paramedics the police officers whoever is going to be a part of this you know actual remediation process like you're the one who's going to get those details for them so that's a really big aspect of thinking of being a cybersecurity analyst right and you know once you get that ingrained in your mind everything else is secondary right learning the skills is secondary you just have to embody that mindset of like investigating gathering information that's going to be needed as a dispatcher to give to whoever's going to be taking the next step to get things done and now if you want to get promoted from being a dispatcher to a police officer where well, you have to build the skills of a police officer that gathers the information from the dispatcher and takes that information and uses it in order to respond to whatever is happening in the incident right or the fireman or the paramedic whoever the case is right that's how i thought of myself as a cybersecurity analyst and i think for me in general i do like to abstract things away from like what they are right i like to i realized earlier in my career i was typically a lot of times so focused on the nitty-gritty details that i forget to zoom out so whenever i find myself like too ingrained in stuff I, I zoom out a little bit and just like think of things in an abstract way so that's kind of why I'm, I'm able to think of it in this way now when i was working as a detection engineer in my last role, I did a dog. I thought of myself as a detective, right? Detection, detecting, detective, right? It's very 
obvious and it's, and it's very simple right as a detective you're not ex exactly the dispatcher right you're not the dis dispatcher right you're that's like the first line of defense the detective is looking for more like you're analyzing these different artifacts right you're looking through these different artifacts these evidences and you're trying to make sense of them right you're, you're trying to make sense of all these different data sources you have right so let's say in this case like something happened like let's say in the real world let's say there was a an incident like i don't want to use like some some words that could get flagged by you YouTube too but let's say there was a uh, there was a home invasion for example right well during that home invasion the attacker left some artifacts and some pieces of evidence that are going to help you point back to who it was right so in this case as a detective you're looking at the footprint you're looking at the fingerprint you're looking at a piece of hair that they left right you're looking at all these different data sources and looking for evidence within them that will point you back to the attacker right all of these different things have some metadata within them right they have maybe like dna data they have like maybe like the shoe has like some like kind of sand data that you can use to like analyze within the forensic lab right so you're as a detective you're going in and like you're sleuthing and just trying to find all those different pieces of information within the data you have access to in order to actually apply that data into figuring out who the attacker was right so that's how i thought of myself i was a detective i was looking for what are the different pieces of information within these different data sources that i can use to catch this threat actor right and that's a very high level of it but once you think of it from that perspective Perspective, right they can zoom in into okay like my data sources are aws my data sources are okta my data sources are cloudflare my data sources are one password whatever the case is right and then you start bringing these data sources together and figuring out ways by which you can correlate information between them ip addresses user agents event names right a uh, net flow right you know uh going from this source to this destination right all of these different things right http requests right all these different things are all pieces of evidence that give me an idea of what i'm trying to find and then lead me back to who exactly is doing this right that's what i thought of myself as a detection engineer and that kind of helped me like dive into that right it's sort of like a, a it's a it's sort of like a gamified experience in the sense that you know when you're playing a game like I'm, I'm not much of a gamer i just recently started i literally downloaded zelda the other day on my nintendo and i've just i've not played it yet like literally i just looked at the download i'm like oh i'll play it later i've not played it yet so i'm not much of a gamer but when you're a gamer right at least i've seen like people play games so when you're a gamer right whether you're, whether you're playing fortnite or you're playing fifa whatever the case is right you're emulating or embodying that character within the game right that's how you're able to like kind of figure out the story right figure out where you're going right if, if, if it's in fortnite you're emulating or embodying that person that you're playing that character you're playing as in order to like you know figure out the details of things like you know maybe to like steal something or to like whatever it is you're doing within the game right like there's a story behind it and you embody that character to navigate the story like i remember i saw my friends playing god of war a while back and in god of war you're emulating you're you're embodying the perspective of that guy i don't know who is what his name is uh within god of war and you're going through the story you're like go, navigating through different things like obviously like you're not at the tech you're not looking for data but the point i'm trying to make is in this sort of gamified thinking you're emulating the presence and the personality and entity of that person in the game in order to finish the game right now in this case cybersecurity, it's, it's it's not a game right it's, it's real life it's real data it's real world incidents so but you're emulating the perspective and persona of a detective and that perspective and persona kind of helps you kind of dig deeper and understand like what exactly is the point of what i'm doing right now recently my my my, my career has moved in a different direction now i work as a incident response engineer at a fan company and what i do is different from what a detection engineer does right when you're a responder you're essentially a fireman right that's how i think of a responder you're putting out fires but there's a lot more to like taking that you know you know host to put out a fire there's a lot more to that and if you kind of align this um with the instant response life cycle right there's the investigation side of things now you might not really be doing the initial investigation side of things right that's where the dispatcher comes in right the dispatcher is the first line of defense or the first line of analysis and understanding what's happening and the dispatcher gives you these details right as a fireman and based on these details you do your analysis oh snap like it's a it's a three-story building and the fire is like xyz intensity right i've never worked as a fireman so i don't really know how they categorize these different things but it's a three-story building so we're gonna need a ladder the fire is this intensity so we're gonna need like 10 different trucks we're gonna need like five people right to make sure like we put out this fire right we're gonna need some hammers and some axes to like break down the door right you're, you're doing the next state of triage beyond what 
the dispatcher gave you, right? So that's like your investigation, your analysis, and all of that stuff, right? But prior to that, I, I, I missed the preparation phase. If you're a fireman, you have to make sure that your trucks are always ready. They're, you know, the, the hoses are always ready. Your fire, your firemen are always ready. Like everybody is always ready. That's the pre preparation phase, right? So you're not doing the work of a dispatcher, but you're making sure that once that dispatch comes in, like we're ready to go. We know what we need to do. We know the trucks that are going out. We know who is on shift and all those things, right? That's the preparation phase. And then in the containment phase, it's like, okay, we need to put out this fire. Like we need to like get this fire to come down to a certain level, right? We need to figure out a way to, to get third floor to be completely fire free so we can come down to the second floor. Whatever the case is, like you have to contain the fire. Now there's a red piece there are people inside the fire inside the building inside the house that need to be rescued we need to pull them out of that house we need to make sure that the babies are safe the the kids are safe the mom is safe everybody's safe we have to get them out of there we have to make sure that you know if there's any gas leaks like we we, we turn that off immediately right that's the eradication phase right and also also part of the containment phase and the recovery phase is probably where like you know you have the paramedics come in like okay let's take these people to the paramedics make, make sure they're good you know uh, if there's anything we need we need to do in regards to uh, making sure that our own firemen are okay as well like you know confirm that as well right like i'm not a fireman i'm not a paramedic but i just want to embody that persona in terms of what i'm doing right in cybersecurity. so you know if you apply these same concepts to what you're doing in terms of like containment eradication recovery in your role as a well, in my role as a, a as a responder right like i i like that's kind of my application of that and then after that you have like the lessons learned or the post incident activity where you're like okay this is what happened this is what we could have done better we could have improved our response time by getting to the uh site to the fire the place where the fire was going on a lot earlier about like three minutes right if we did this or we did that like we could have made sure that we put out a fire faster if we had five trucks instead right we could have brought out more people on time if we had uh 10 people instead right that's like okay for next time we're gonna feed back our lessons learned into our preparation to make sure that next time when we face this same incident we're doing better we're putting out this fire faster and more efficiently more lives are saved or people are saved faster right they're not going to go through that hardship for a long time right so again when you embody the perspective of of the cybersecurity role that you're doing it, it, it sort of gamifies it and i get a lot of adrenaline for my job whether you know what, what i do now in the past because in cybersecurity our purpose is protecting critical infrastructure sensitive data a bunch of other things like that so that's the purpose that you're going in with and that's what drives you there are processes that you take right when you're you're a fireman you go through all this training right maybe like physical training like actual climbing ladders right maybe going into a, a room with smoke i don't know what the training is but i'm just saying like there are diff these different things that you do they probably also have drills as well right at schools you have fire drills all of those things so myself as a you know as a as a, as a security engineer i do drills on myself like i practice using labs i try to make sure that I'm, I'm building skills to make sure that i have the ability that at the point when there's an incident i know what to do or at least i have some understanding or an idea of what i need to do as a security engineer when i was a, when i was a detection engineer when i was an analyst or even now when i'm, when I'm doing something uh, entirely different so for me that's really work because i just kind of zoom out and even in zooming out i'm also zooming at the same time it's kind of a weird way to put it but knowing that okay this is my purpose this is what i'm doing this is the mindset behind it helps me really thrive in what i'm doing because you know, that way like um i have the bigger picture in mind but i also have nitty gritty details down as well so yeah i just wanted to put this out there i, I thought it was a pretty interesting way of thinking about things it's really helped me i never really thought about it until re re recently that I, it would be very helpful for people out there who might you know be wanting to like take some steps to kind of change the way they think about their roles especially in cybersecurity. so that's it for me if you found value in the video please be sure to subscribe like share the video and comment down below like how do you think of a cybersecurity job i, I really want to know as well also check out the links in the description for everything from our discord as well as like various resources i've compiled to help you with your cybersecurity career and if you want to learn why i quit my last job at datadog definitely check out this video that'll be coming up somewhere on the screen here and thanks for watching i'll see you in the next video Bye bye